have your way do what you want to do move upon our hearts our minds god we love you god and we are grateful father that you are doing a work from the inside out in all of our lives now god stand in my body think with my mind preach with my lips let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be found acceptable in your sight oh lord Woo, my strength and my redeemer everybody that loves the lord with all their heart come on put your hands together and bless him come on just say hallelujah come on bless him come on worship him come on he's worthy come on with the fruit of your lips hallelujah come on come on tell him how good he is you're marvelous you're wonderful come on tell him how wonderful he is come on bless him with the fruit of your lips he's been too good to you oh god thank you God, thank you. Hallelujah. Mm. You're mighty good. If you have your Bibles, hallelujah. Jesus. Woo! I don't know about you, but he is in this space. He's in this place. Can you feel him? Yes. Speak, Lord. Yes, God. Mm. Turning your Bibles to Genesis chapter 29. First book of the Bible. You should know where it is. And if you just happen not to, through the Bible is always there for a Sunday school class to take you through the Bible and learn all the books of the Bible and what's in them. Genesis chapter 29, looking at verse 16 to 31. I'm starting a new series today. It's called Straight Talk. Amen. We're going to go through April and May with Straight Talk. We're going to take some tender topics and unpack them for you that we believe that will impact you and impact our children our parents our family amen. amen straight talk anybody need some straight talk amen straight talk genesis chapter 29 verse 16 to 31 in your own personal devotional time uh, please read isaiah 53 it'll give you a, even a backdrop onto this story that we're going to deal with amen genesis 29 and I want to just give you permission while the sermon is going that you would post on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, things I say that hit your spirit. Amen. I want you to let social media world learn, know that each friendship is right here. Yes. Amen. And we're worshiping the Lord in the beauty of holiness. We can't be afraid of you and your technology. Now, don't be going somewhere surfing somewhere else while you're on your phone. Amen. Amen. We're going to track you. We're going to track you. <laughs> Genesis 29, chapter 29, first book of the Pentateuch, verse 16 to 31. I'm reading out of my New King James Bible, and my Bible reads thusly. Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes was delicate, but Rachel was beautiful, a form and appearance. Now Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for Rachel. Jesus, your younger daughter. And Laban said, it is better that I give her to you that, than that I should give her to another man. Stay with me. And so Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed only a few days to him because of the love he had for her. And Jacob said to Laban, give me my wife. For my days are fulfilled that I may go into her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. And now it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to Jacob. And he went into her. And Laban gave his maid Zilpha to his daughter Leah as a maid. So it came to pass in the morning that, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, what is this you have done to me? Was it not for Rachel that I served you? Why then have you deceived me? And Laban said, it must not be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week and we will give you this one also for the service which you will serve with me still another seven years. Then Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. So he gave him his daughter Rachel as his wife also. And Laban gave his maid Bilhah to his daughter Rachel as a maid. Then Jacob also went into Rachel, and he also loved Rachel more than Leah. 
And he served with Laban still another seven years. Verse 31. And when the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb. But Rachel was barren. This is the word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of our God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Straight talk. I want to tag this first sermon in this series entitled Rejection is Real. Rejection is Real. Can you turn to your neighbor, look him straight in the face on the right hand side and say, baby, baby. Rejection, rejection is real. Turn to the one on the left hand side, look him straight in the face and say, rejection, rejection. really hurts. Rejection is real. Rejection is real. A friend of mine, oh wait, before I even begin this, my sister is here. And her daughter, Yana, and Dior, and Davon. Come on, y'all stand up. Say hi to everybody. I want y'all, y'all know my sister, Eileen. She's been on our prayer list and in the family. Hey, Amen. See, y'all thought y'all was going to get out without me saying something about y'all. Now, if y'all want to know every secret about me, don't ask Eileen. Because she will tell you. Hey, Amen. She's also like my second mother. Hey, Amen. Rejection is real. A friend of mine recently told me his seven-year-old daughter... Let him taste some real, real good new candy she had. He said when he put it in his mouth, his initial response was, ooh, 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 ooh. Mm, this is bitter. His daughter said, wait, daddy, don't spit it out. You have to keep chewing it to get to the sweet part. And somebody here may be in a bitter situation. But I'm here to tell you that if you keep chewing, keep working on it, you'll make it to the sweet future that God has for you. Yes, you may be in a bitter season that seems dark, but I believe God is trying to process you through the bitter to get you to the sweet part, to the new season that God has prepared for you. All of us have experienced a bitter or dark season. Uh, you either just came out of one or you're about to go into one. But if you just keep living, you will encounter one eventually. Especially one filled with the taste of rejection, abandonment, invisibility, which are dark night of the soul. I realize that the biblical stories of the patriarch housed here in Genesis are so rich because there is so much drama. Uh, most of the drama is created by the actors uh, themselves and they instruct us on how to handle your bitter seasons of life. They read like soap operas uh, and where our foremothers and forefathers and Sunday schools teachers for generations taught of them and they served as entertainment but also as chronicles of life experience that has instructional value. Do I have a witness here? Uh, these stories serve as a reminder that God can work through foolishness, frowns, falsehoods, and failures. That God can even work through liars. Mm -hmm. And that's the good news because sometimes we are dangerously mirroring them ourselves. Uh, but on the other hand, the, uh, this story serves as a searing reminder of your failures and mine and all of our own sins. Do I have at least another witness in the house? Mm -hmm. uh, our text finds the hustler and the swindler, his name is Jacob. Uh, anybody know who he is? Uh, he, he's right there in the text. Uh, he's a hustler and he's a swindler and he's on the run. Uh, he's running because his older brother Esau was trying to kill him for deceiving their father and stealing the blessings of Esau's inheritance. 
uh, at the direction of his mother, Jacob traveled, Audrey, to uh, Haran where his uncle Laban lived. Uh, and as soon as he arrived, he saw Laban's daughter Rachel out in the fields of uh, her father's sheep, attending to the father's sheep. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was pretty uh, much love at first sight. <clears throat> uh, have you ever had that experience? Bam! Love at first sight. Uh, this brother lost his cotton picking mind. Uh, he saw her in the fields and he said, I got to have her. Uh, he, Jacob, was enraptured with Rachel. Jacob started working on Laban's sheep farm and eventually they hammered out and worked out a deal. Uh, look at verse 20. According to verse 20, the deal was that if Jacob worked for seven years, Laban would let him marry Rachel. Uh, oh, that's a long time and that's a that's, that's a that's a big contract y'all but we, we are not told nothing about uh, the seven years except they seem only to Jacob but a few days because of the love he had for her and I'm trying to tell somebody this morning that's a lot of love where seven days uh, seven years only feel like a few days but you can imagine how many times Jacob would catch a glimpse at Rachel while he was working uh, on daddy's farm because every time she would sashay out of the tent and push the little whisk of her hair back over her ear it would drive him bonkers uh, you can imagine how many times he passed her a love note uh, through her older sister Leah and how many times he spent night dreaming and dreaming at night uh, about the upcoming marriage that's going to happen on the seventh year. Uh, this was going to be the blessing for which he had been striving his entire life for. He's going to have the woman he already wants. Finally, look at the text. Seven years have arrived and the big day has come. Uh, we are told in verse 22 that he had a huge wedding feast. Uh, and then the night Jacob went into the tent to be with his bride, uh, he laid with her. But in the morning, he discovered uh, he was married to Leah. Uh, somebody say flip the switch. Uh, 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 he, he, uh, Leah showed up and this brother was furious I would be and I would expect any of you in here uh, who had an expectation for one spouse and got somebody else that you didn't plan to have Lord Jesus you found somebody else in your bed that you did not come on somebody and maybe somebody don't really feel in me because you already used to finding somebody else in your bed preach Pastor Maxwell uh, oh, oh yeah 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 she uh, he, 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 he was furious he was furious and, and at the seven years think about it at the seven years Jacob is eager to claim his bride and then on the wedding, wedding night the trickster Jacob is tricked Laban gives Jacob his older daughter Leah instead of Rachel and Jacob is shocked and evidently pissed off and he says in the morning behold it's Leah uh, and, and so if you take the word behold in the text there uh, and put an explicitive there, you would be correct. Because in the Hebrew, he's cursing. Uh, he, he's not just saying like behold, see it. No, he's going off, y'all. Uh, he, he's going off. The Hebrew makes it clear. Sometimes the English translation is so comfortable. But no, imagine you, and put yourself in the text and how you would feel. And this man who deceived, who, who himself deceived his blind daddy, uh, and deceived uh, his blind daddy on a dark night uh, now uh, is being duped because he, he had probably had a little too much wine during the celebration. Uh, isn't that crazy that you don't know who you laying down with? Uh, and maybe because some of us don't, don't care about the eyes of the one you're laying with. It's all about your fulfillment and not about uh, a mutuality and reciprocity. Uh, it's about sex and not love. And there's a big difference between the two. Preach, Pastor Max. Well, I think I will. And so some people believe that this hustler, this hustler named Jacob, got what he deserved. It's, it's a sense of poetic justice uh, that goes further than saying the deceiver got deceived. There's much more than the deceiver got deceived in the text. Because however, Jacob had broken the law of the firstborn when he tricked his brother Esau out of the birthright in Genesis 25, 29 to 34. 
And then he went on to trick his brother out of the blessing in Genesis 27, 1 through 40. And so the law of the firstborn mandated that the firstborn son, Sherry Maxwell, got two-thirds of the inheritance. Uh, see Deuteronomy 21, 15 through 17. But now Jacob is caught by another law. He stole and operated in the firstborn and broke it. Now Laban explains the same thing, that the younger daughter cannot be married off before the first da firstborn daughter is married first. And so uh, karma has caught up with him. Uh, the, the boomerang has come back. Uh, uh, he released it. And sometimes the stuff that you do will track you back down. And now it's tracking him back down in the tech. So the trickster is being tricked. And the punishment fits the crime. Uh, and I can imagine uh, that uh, Jacob stormed out to Laban and said, What is this that you have done to me? Did I not serve you for Rachel? Uh, why then have you deceived me? And so deception, as we keep discovering in this story, is something of a family problem. You remember Rebecca's uh, deception. You remember Abraham's deception. It's something in the DNA of a family. And some of us don't realize that we got things that's flowing from uh, generation to generation. And so if you are born again believer, you have to cut the curse off and speak to that curse. And don't allow it to keep flowing in your family. And lying and deception is all in the DNA of this family. And so Laban gets Jacob calmed down. Chill out, brother. It's going to be all right. And he explains that in these part of the town, in this part of the town, in this part of the country, uh, you don't just marry uh, the second daughter. You, you never marry off the second daughter until the first one is gone. Then Laban comes up with another deal. He tells Jacob to take a week honeymoon with Leah, and at the end of that time, he will let him have Rachel. But you can only have her if you work another seven years on, uh, on the farm. And so then Jacob married Rachel also. He agreed. I'm trying to tell somebody that's some real kind of loving. And Rachel must have been a bad sister. Because not only does he do it for seven years and he gets somebody he did not want, uh, he accepts what he did not want, but he said, listen, I'm going to still work to get what I want. And I'm trying to tell women, if, you, if your man don't work to be in your life, he will never appreciate who you are. Uh, because a man has to work to be in your space, to earn the right and privilege to walk with, oh my God, you on his, um, his arm. Uh, if a man don't work to be in that relationship, he will never be invested in it. That's another sermon for another day. Uh, but you see it right here. But according to the text, uh, he loved Rachel. Uh, he, he worked another seven years because he loved her more than Leah. Somebody say more than Leah. And so in the text, many observers miss Lear's level of rejection and lament. In fact, most preachers, Minister Audrey, they don't even pay attention to Leah. Leah is rejected by the church. Leah is overlooked by theologians. Leah is overlooked by those in academia. Leah is always overlooked. Are, are you ever overlooked? Leah, Leah, Leah is uh, uh, marginalized and so uh, her level of rejection and lament is right there and so the context for Leah's rejection and lament uh, is the marriage transfer uh, from her, her father to her husband mm -hmm. bear in mind sisters not a husband of her choice uh, see in that culture they they believed in the wisdom of the father to help choose the spouse Mm -hmm. and, and I think we need a little bit of wisdom where we uh, measure should we marry somebody and listen to the elders and what they have to see because they've seen some things you've never seen before and they can warn you of something that you would not see because you're so blind and addicted in love and got a soul tie you can't even hear mama or grandma saying no that person ain't right for you oh y'all don't want me to keep going down there Mm -hmm. and so, the, so, the, so they, they do it oh, they get married and the marriage uh, is like a form of a work contract her father uh, makes a contract and breaks a contract don't miss it don't miss it because Leah is being treated like a commodity exchange for Jacob serving Laban for seven years in exchange for a wife 
Rachel is the wife that Jacob chooses. Leah is the wife that Laban uses. Uh, uh, Rachel is the wife that J Jacob uh, uh, wants. Leah is the wife that Jacob rejects. Leah's rejection is the outcome, listen, of her father's deceitful action and her husband's angry response. How would you feel if you were the product of a deal gone bad? Preach Pastor Max, so I'm trying to help. How would you feel if you were part of a transaction and the only memory of the transaction is that you're the bad part? Come on, Maxwell. Both, both of these men in the text betray Leah. Both men uh, are, are rejecting her or puts her in a rejected posture. Leah is the instrument that Laban uses to ensnare Jacob into another seven years service for Rachel. Uh, uh, she is re a rejected, write this down, tool mm -hmm, for daddy's game. She's a rejected tool for daddy's game and I, and I want to talk to all the young girls now and some of you elder ladies too don't let nobody use you you ain't nobody's tool but people will use you for a tool to gain what they want to gain uh, see what's happening in sex trafficking all over DMV they're snatching our girls and our boys and they're putting them uh, in prostitution and they're using them for gain adults using children for their gain come on preach pastor Maxwell and they're doing it in our families they're doing it in our neighborhood they're doing it all around and until we make up our minds to say no you will not use our children as a tool oh oh I feel preaching coming in my mouth download holy ghost i'm willing to listen to what you want me to preach uh, she's a rejected tool for daddy's game the trickster jacob has now been tricked there's always somebody a little more better than you at what you're doing uh, there, there's always see yeah, a lot of these young brothers think they hard but i can introduce you to some real hard knox brothers that got silver in their hair uh, you think you a killer. You a bad dude. You Man, you get around some of these brothers will chew you up and spit you out. Lord have mercy. Some of the old brothers. Yeah, see, Laban had some, some, some hookups in him. He, he had some swave and tricks and back tricks that Jacob was unaware of. And so for Genesis 27 says two brothers were exchanged by means of a trick before a blind man. That was Jacob and Esau. But now in Genesis 29, you're seeing two sisters are exchanged by a trick in the darkness of night and behind the veil, which eliminates Jacob's sight. Mm. Uh, both of them are in tricks and, uh, and don't let nobody trick you come on that's another sermon well feast mm -hmm. they, 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 they feasted and Jacob uh, has a feast and I'm sure he had a little too much Chirac yes he did uh, and, and Jacob takes his wife uh, and so he takes her and he goes into her to, to have relations with her to help us with the children in the room uh, and, but, but he has Rachel in his mind it's one thing to have Rachel in his mind, but you don't know who you're sleeping with. And some people have the wrong image in their mind, and you ain't the one. You ain't the one in their mind. But they with you. Preach, Pastor Maxwell. And so in the morning, Jacob wakes up, and his image of Rachel, of Rachel is shattered, and Leah laments begins right there look at it in 29 verse 25a and in the morning behold which in, in the hebrew is winneha it was leah behold it was leah and the behold i told you is like a curse word what are you doing here he basically saying another way he's saying i don't want you have you had somebody declare that over your life why are you even here i'm trying to tell somebody this morning rejection is real there are some Lears and some Leonards out there that know the sting of rejection. You have been rejected by a parent uh, uh, who denies even your very existence. You have been rejected by the love of your life who you invested your existence into. You have been rejected by a group of friends at school who you're trying to run with. You have been rejected by a spouse who stepped out on you. You have been rejected. And come on now, my brother, by the girl you have writ written anonymous letters to. Uh, you felt the sting of rejection when you received the pink slip from the company you slaved for year in and year out. Uh, you feel rejected by the 
significant other's pornography addiction you feel rejected when she gave you the ring back my brother you feel rejected by those who promised to love you uh, but then they wouldn't even marry you uh, you felt rejected brother when she gave you the ring back and said don't come back I'm trying to tell you rejection is real and this morning, I, I want to remind anybody up in here or someone who's battling rejection or is dealing with this feeling of low self-esteem or feeling kind of invisible in your spirit. Uh, I want you to write these three things that I want you to remember from this word to help you to deal with rejection. Right. Uh, you got your papers out. Right inside your worship folder is a announcement sheet. Flip it over and write these things down. You need to remember this because if you're not feeling rejection right now, it's going to come. It's coming. First of all, remember, you are more than enough. Come on, come on, write that down. I hear you already shouting your spirit. I know that already, Pastor. I'm not sure yet. Let's see. Remember, you are more than enough. You got that down? Number two, remember, you have the ministry of goodbye. Remember, you have the ministry of goodbye. Hasta la visa. Wouldn't want to see you. Wouldn't want to be you. And thirdly, remember, you have a blessing hid in the rejection. Remember, you have a blessing hidden in the rejection. I'll give it to you one more time. One, remember, you are more than enough. Two, remember, you have the ministry of goodbye and thirdly and finally, remember you have a blessing hid in, hidden in the rejection. Everybody pray with me. Remember, you are more than enough. If you read the text carefully, the narrator of the text introduces a new thought as he recalls the dynamic of Jacob's single-mindedness desire for Rachel. Jacob has a made-up mind. I wish men today would make up their mind. Because we are seed carriers, and when we make up our mind, we release seed, and then it can bear fruit. But if we are sometimey, it confuses the women in our community. We've got to make up our mind. One thing I admire about Jacob, he saw her and said, bam, thou art the one. <laughs> you know how your scope, come on now. Y'all know how, yo, y'all know how, how brothers scope. Thou are the one. I'm sure he spoke in tongues and black flip. Thou art the one. Because when you can make up your mind, everything flows with that movement of a choice of a made up mind. When you are cloudy and foggy, you live in the fog and you never get nowhere living in fog. God has not ordained us to be in a fog. Make up your mind. It can be, I will remain single all my life. Amen. It'll give you a destination and know how to handle things and help you to make choices. I never had that anointing. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. I never had that anointing. I, I, I never had that anointing. I, 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 I didn't have the anointing of celibacy. Some of you got the anointing of celibacy. Amen. That's a great anointing. But walk in it. Live in the decision that you are making. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. Remember, you're more than the soul. So look at the text. Verse 29, 30 says, So Jacob went into Rachel also, and he loved Rachel more than Leah. So he had Leah earlier, and now he got Rachel. Lord, that's another sermon. Whew, stop preaching. Come on, Holy Ghost, help me. Let me finish. Er earlier in the text, Leah's eyes were delicate, but Rachel was beautiful of form and appearance. Can y'all see that in the text? Uh, what the text is trying to say is Leah was normal mm -hmm. and Rachel had a spark of fire and was a brick house. I said it out loud. Boom, dun, dun, boom, boom. Come on now, y'all act like y'all don't know. It said beautiful in form and shape and appearance. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and, and it did not mean when you read the text, because many theologians messed this up and said that her eyes, was, was, was she was homely. She didn't look good. That's not the translation of the text correctly. She just had delicate eyes. She had a different type of eyes. But they were beautiful, just different. But there are some people that got fire in their eyes. And I do tell you, sisters, the brothers are attracted to fire in the eyes. But they can't handle the fire behind the communication. You wanted her because of that passion she had. She just sashayed around with passion. And now you want her to don't talk so much. And don't be so passionate about that. And don't be passionate about that. But she has an anointing. That's the very thing that you attracted to. Now you don't want. And some of you sisters are just the same. The very thing you wanted and attracted to. Now you don't want the brother. You don't want him to swag, make decisions, to be confident. He said, I put my hand down. That's fine. Are we going to do No, we ain't doing it. I got an opinion. Well, you was glad that he made a decision before he was handling his business. Why are you can't handle him making decisions now? Let him be the man and be the man and be the man. Oh, I feel a lot of preaching coming up in my spirit right now. You can't be afraid. If you're going to be with a man, be with a man. You're not with a boy. You're with a man. Please, Pastor, you don't need no boy. You need a man. So don't act for a man to be a boy. You want a man? Get a man, not a boy. And the difference between a man, a male doesn't mean he's a man. You can be male and never be a man. Because a man is a man maker. Preach Pastor Maxwell. And too many of our women are messing around with boys. And too many of our men are messing around with girls who won't grow up, who are spoiled, and don't want to handle their business the way they handle their business. Preach Pastor, tear the text up. Tear the text up. Tear the text up. It up. And we, Leah eyes was delicate. Oh, there's something there in the text. I can't give it to you right now. But that, that, that was a reflection of a closeness and intimacy she had even with God. Mm -hmm. The dynamic of Jacob's, look at it. The dynamic of Jacob's partiality to Rachel has its counterpart in his willful neglect of Leah. Leah, listen y'all, is the face of Laban's mastery and deception. How would you like being the face of your father's deception? Her image, Leah, my God, I feel you, Leah. Her image is the broken image of the promised Rachel. She's kind of like a broken version in their eyes. Mm -hmm. The elder and the younger sister are in the text and they are unequally yoked in competition to their jointly owned husband. And a lot of women, uh, women this read this theologians uh, and women as theologians read this text and women in the, in the congregation read it too. And they say, look, uh, competition for their husband. I'm glad we are in the New Testament. Because that, that, that being in competition and, and, she, and he having two women at the same time, I will never stand for that. Oh, really? They're doing Old Testament stuff in New Testament right now. You know he has another woman. You know you second. You ain't the first one. You know you're not. The, why are you settling for being the other? Y'all don't want me to preach it the way I feel it. Why are you settling for being a, an option? And only, listen, a nighttime option. You won't come see me in the daytime. You're only a nighttime option. Why are we accepting that foolishness? And you sisters know it ain't just the men, it's you too. You strolling and slaying at night too. Going and picking them up. Y'all can do it, I can do it too. No! That's not biblical. That's carnal. That's the world. And the devil is a liar. You too precious to allow people to use you. You too sweet to allow somebody to diminish your queenhood. You got queenhood in you. Walk like a queen. Talk like a queen. And let no Negro use you. Please, Pastor. Men of God, you are a man of God. Yes, there's many options, but fit 
focus on one and give your devotion to that one. Listen, your pastor can talk transparently about my own mistakes. I'm not talking from a position of perfection. I'm talking from a position of God's work on my life. And somebody needs to say, thank God for working on my life. So you see two sisters who grew up together in the same house now competing for this one husband. Their sisterhood has been damaged. How many women in church has allowed the sisterhood in the church to be damaged by some guy visiting? <laughs> Strolling through. He ain't even committed to the ministry, not committed to the church. He just tall, dark, and fly and got a bad suit on that he borrowed in the car that don't belong to him. And now you're competing against your own sister, throwing elbows at them and talking them down and whispering their secrets so somebody cannot come on now. You won't even keep your sister's secret. You done did ministry together. You done ate together. You done did so many works and now this guy got you divided. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. And we know I'm seeing grown men fighting over sisters in church. Man with the pastor, because the pastor counseled them and told them the reality of the word of God. Then they mad with me. Come be mad with me. I'm going to give them the word whether you like it or not. I'm going to give them the word in the daytime or the night. I'm going to give them the word till they kill me. And I ain't afraid of no one. Preach, pastor. I'm going to give them the word. Let the hide the word in your heart that you might not sin against God. I'm going to give them the word. Say, Pastor, give them the word, Pastor. It appears, it appears when you read the text, it appears that Leah is not enough. But if you read the movement of the text, as you read scripture, there is intentional movement. And when you come up to this place in the text, it's, but God. <sighs> I don't know about you, but I got a lot of but God moments. If God didn't step in, I don't know where I would be. But God. I, if God didn't move in my life, I would be jacked up. But God. If God didn't show up, I, I would know what I would. But God. I, I've been seeking deep in sin. God from the priest who showed Seeking from within. But God. Is anybody got a but God praise? But God. But God. When they said we couldn't have babies. But God. Oh. All things are possible when God gets involved. Oh. Somebody say, but God. But God, but God. Hey! But God. Yeah, cancer better it had me, but God. I'm still here, but God. Listen. Y'all pushing me out the door. Let me preach for a few more minutes. Deacon Mathis, can I preach for a little longer? All right. My emeritus says, preach on, pastor. Listen. Leah appears not to be enough. You may be rejected by one, but God chooses you. You see, someone cannot appreciate who you are. Don't, don't trip. Don't run off trying to prove that you're better. God chooses you. Stay in Christ. They don't appreciate the beauty that you are, my sister. They don't appreciate, oh, God, strong man of God, the kingdom man that you are. Don't freeze. Don't react. Don't go in the street. Don't lose your mind. God chooses you. When God chooses you, he uses you for his glory. Remember, you are more than enough. Don't focus on what you don't have compared to what somebody do have. Focus on what you do have. 
Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to tell you there's substance in all of us. Uh, I, I have too many people who keep their minds and compare. Stop doing a comparative analysis to other people. You are not them. And God will give you what he thinks you need. Stop comparing with what you got, how you look. You are more than enough. Uh -huh. My daughter, Michaela, my twin, uh, she, she like her daddy when she was small. Love bouncing balls. In fact, I was addicted. My sister can tell you because she busts my blue ball. I still haven't forgiven you for that. <laughs> We're going to have to have a conversation about that blue ball. I slept with that ball. I had that ball everywhere I went. <laughs> and she put me in check. I, I, was, I was not being nice. And she disciplined me by taking my ball and didn't seem to lose air. Oh, See what sin will do for you? Yeah. You lose air. I preach that later on. New my spirit air. When you are sinful, you lose the spirit. My daughter loved bouncing balls like her daddy, rolling on top of the ball. I used to go into all the stores, especially like Kmart and Walmart. They had the big rack of balls. Woo, I would just take all of them out and just play through the store and roll on them and bounce them and dribble. I still do that, by the way. But it's, I, I just have a thing about balls. Woo. They're not like oatmeal raisin cookies, but they balls. <laughs> and Michaela loved balls. She can roll. She had this rubbery skin when she was small and rubbery. I just remember her. Just rubbery. First lady's grinning from mouth to mouth. And, and, but, but one day she was outside bouncing the ball, bouncing the ball. And then, I, then also she was going, huh, huh. And then she took it. And she might have been about four years old. She ran to me and showed me the ball. She said, Daddy. The harder you throw it down, the higher it bounces. I, I thought about that for a minute. When you throw down a plate, it breaks. When you throw down a sandbag, it just thumps to the ground and stays there. But if you throw down a rubber ball, the harder you throw it down, the higher it will bounce back. I, I, I thought about the plate, I thought about the sandbag, and I looked at Michaela's rubber ball and I thought sometimes when we are thrown down, we break like a plate. Sometimes when we throw down, we stay down in depression like a sandbag. But sometimes when we throw down, we bounce back even higher like a rubber ball. What makes the difference? One breaks, one lumps, and one bounces back. The difference between the plate, the sandbag, and the ball is what they are made of. What I'm trying to tell you is you are more than enough. You are a believer. You got faith to deepen in your substance. You, you, you have uh, grace and mercy at your bedside. You have hope and joy. It's your substance. You are more than a... Do you realize who you are and the substance of your makeup? You're just not just anybody. Uh, you are somebody. You are more than enough. There is more to you, listen, than meets the eye. Don't miss it. It's right there in the text. Uh, you see, he saw Rachel. And there's a lot of people who see the outside of the package, but that's dead on the inside. Oh, uh, y'all missed that. Uh, I, 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 you've got to convince yourself that I'm more than enough and I'm much more than you see and if you have a spiritual eye you will see so much more that is in me and then you'll fall in love not with just the outside package but you'll fall in love with the depth of who I am man of God you got so much more than just dapping the brothers and saying what's up you got some depth in you in the spirit realm in fact God is trying to provoke even greater things out of you so you can know how much you got in you is there at least one person who said I'm more than enough this morning I'm more than enough. The text reveals, look at it. I'm not finished with this point yet. Let me rip it up a little bit more. The text reveals is God's, look at this, God's discriminatory perspective toward Leah. God's discriminatory perspective toward Leah. This 30 verse, 31st verse said, when the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, rejected. He opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Notice that God 
as an active participant in the narrative, he has been absent in the deal. He wasn't in the deal and Laban and Jacob didn't consult God. They made deals without God uh, as they disposed of Leah and Rachel who had no rights. Jacob's name is linked, look it, to partiality to Rachel. Jacob is partial to Rachel. Um, but God is partial to Leah. Mm -hmm. God's name is linked to partiality to Leah. What God does for Leah, God does not do in this part of the text to Rachel. Uh, in this way, the narrator brings God and Leah into partnership. Mm -hmm. uh, the character who has the privilege of being at the heart of God's concern is the unloved or the hated wife. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you, you're more than enough for God. He sees what you're going through. He sees the brokenness. And he's saying, me and you coming together is a majority. Uh, we can partner together and do some things that nobody can ever expect. Uh, but if you keep choosing uh, what you think is fruitful, you'll find that it's really barren on the inside. Yeah. Who am I talking to? You, you're looking at the fruit and you're doing a fruit inspection, uh, but you don't know what the root is. And until you get on the inside and too many of us brothers and women today, you're looking at the outside and you're thinking it's fruitful. Uh, but, but, that, but they're barren, empty, and dead on the inside. Come on, somebody say, go deeper than that. You got to go deeper than that. Uh, you better go. All you singles in here, you better go deeper before you choose a mate because it's a lifetime commitment. Go deeper than what you see and the money he got or she got. Deeper than the house and the car you drive because it can all be rented and don't belong to them. You better go deeper than what you think and find out and do a deeper inspection. Uh, God wants Leah and you and me to know there's more to me than meets the eye. I'm much more than you see. I got some stuff in me. I got some treasure in me. I got some joy in me. I got some love and compassion in me. And if you only check the outside of the pocket package, you will never see the blessing on the inside. Can I breathe a minute? I'm trying to help somebody here to understand. People are attracted to others that is not in your control. Leah, it's not your fault, baby, that Jacob arrived in one minute. He was attracted to your sister and not you. You can't control who you attracted to. You think you in control? Well, that, you know, you got married and proved that it, that's not true, right? You're not in control. We can't turn off and turn on attraction. Married men do get attracted to other women. Don't you come in my face, though. <laughs> married women have attraction to other men. But the issue is, what are you going to do with the attraction? All of my same gender brothers and sisters, you cannot continue to say, I'm made this way so I can continue to sin. But you, you don't have to do what you do. Heterosexual or homosexual, don't matter. Same gender loving, don't matter. It takes you to make an action and a decision that cause you to go beyond the will of God. You decided, I decided, we decided, all of us decided. Come on, preach, Pastor Maxwell. And so we got to understand God is not just making a decision. He's acting. I don't, I don't just need to be attracted. God's attracted to Leah. And I believe because later on you find that Leah keeps praying to God. And each time she prayed, another son would come out. And she would give him another name. And so Leah, you are enough. Brother Leonard, you are enough. God sees something that others can't see. Stop worrying what people say about you. Stop worrying what they're thinking about you. How they're whispering about you. What God say about you is all you need to be concerned concerned about and what God says that you are sheep of his pasture God says that you are royal priesthood God says you the head and not the tail God says you're more than a conqueror God says you're victorious in Christ God said you're like living stones that got me moving to the next level in my life what God says is what's important come on push your neighbor wake him up I know it's time to go say what God says is the most important mm -hmm. So can I suggest that the way the narrator brings God's omniscience, he is saying this, and write it down, mm -hmm. an annunciation of the unloved matriarch is going to be the future matriarch. The unloved will be the future matriarch. That's the sum total of it. The unloved will be the future. And it's twofold. The narrator represents God's discriminatory concern for Leah and reports God's actions toward her in the conception of sons. Not one son, but four sons initially. And then the narrator represents Leah's distress by development of a prayer of lament. 
She's broken out of her rejection, but she's still praying. Although broken, hurt, wounded, she's praying. Oh, she, 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 she's busted and disgusted by the events, not having control of her own life and her destiny, but she's praying. And she begins to express all her prayers. And for every prayer she gave, she named her son that way. In the way the narrative represents a partnership with God as the initiator and the change for an innocent character who was unjustly used. What I want to close out that for you to write, four distinct prayers brought four distinct sons reflecting the intimacy Leah had with God. And I'm trying to say prayer will let you know you're more than enough. Uh, can I go keep going? Leah, you're more than enough. I'm trying to tell somebody uh, your birthplaces, your birth pains uh, it comes out of the midst of your rejection. Rejection positions you, listen, to give birth. All that rejection that you go through, God's going to use it to birth something spectacular and great out of it. Leah gave four sons to birth and God is trying to tell you although you've been let go although they did not want you no more although they spoke some negative things God's going to use it to birth some great things out of you and that negro or negro that left you is going to be looking how fly you are and how high God's soaring with you are going to regret the blessing that he missed or she missed I'm trying to tell you God will do it for you Mm -hmm. Okay, number one, number one, number two, number two. Remember, you have the ministry of goodbye. Whew, I got to finish this, don't I? It's something when you're preaching, you're downloading at the same time. It's sometimes kind of scary. Remember, you have the ministry of goodbye. If you want to remember this, remember it this way. You know who you are, so don't have a, don't trip. Just say goodbye, Felicia. <laughs> Come on, say it together. Goodbye. No, goodbye, Felicia. Goodbye. Goodbye, Felicia. You see, God's action towards Leah's isolation is to grant her the blessing of fertility. The annunciation of God's blessing to the unloved matriarch has significance in the wider context of the divine promise of posterity to Abraham. What I'm saying is she's rejected, but she's chosen. Mm -hmm. because there's a covenant that had been given and the covenant, the Abrahamic covenant is not functioning through uh, Rachel in this part of the text it's functioning through the rejected one uh -huh. oh you missed that thing, that was your shout moment right there uh, you've been marginalized. You feel invisible, but God is saying, I'm in covenant with you. I have something for you. Jacob, look at Jacob. Jacob's single-minded desire for Rachel represents a threat to the, the future matriarch of Leah. Uh, Jacob does not understand. He knows that there is a lineage that he falls with, but he doesn't understand what constitutes true covenant. Uh, he has a, uh, there's a tension between uh, a choice and promise. <laughs> uh, Rachel is his first choice, but Leah is the promise and the fulfillment all in one. You see, you may be the first choice, and Leah saying, you may be, let me tell you like how Leah would say, hey, baby, you may be the first choice. But listen here, sister, I'm the promise and the fulfillment. <laughs> mm. She's saying, uh, Jacob cannot apportion God's promise of prodigy to his preferred wife. He, he can't give the covenant to whoever he wants uh, God has to be engaged and involved and so Leah is saying I know you my sister but goodbye Felicia uh, I'm not worried about all that you're saying, all that is happening, because God is working in the midst of all the happenings. God is doing some things that nobody can ever take out, can take back. The outcome of husband and wife union lies in the action of God, not in Jacob. The, the husband and wife union lies in the action of God to give or withhold the blessing. I know she's your first choice, but she wasn't God's, because God touched my womb and didn't touch her womb, and God chose for himself. And sometimes God will make a choice that everybody won't understand. But trust me, if you reject it and then feeling invisible, you don't have to feel that way no more. Because I want you to know God takes the foolish things to confound the wise. God moves uh, in a way that no one can even explain it. 
uh, and it's God who is moving. It's the prior wife's position of being unloved. That's Leah. That must be first be overcome by God's power, all-knowing, and involvement. Leah is, listen, the first and primary wife by whom the blessing of Isaac and the promise of God will be fulfilled. Yes, she's rejected. Yes, she's been sold. Yes, she's been mistreated. Yes, that he didn't want her no more. He, he saw her and didn't want her. All he wanted was Rachel. But God said, I see you. I see you. I see you. I ain't miss you. I see all that's in you. And listen, I'm attracted to you. God said, I see something in you that's a treasure stop worrying about what people want to do I'm attracted to you God Almighty is blessing her and making her fruitful and multiply according to Genesis 28 and 2 God's keeping his word through Leah y'all missed that God's keeping his word through Leah he said I am the Lord the God of Abraham your father and the God of Isaac and the land for which you lie I will give you and your offspring and your offspring shall be like dust to the earth the first will be last and the last will be <laughs> what he's saying is and this is Leah now Leah steps up to the wife she comes up she can look Rachel in the face and says I am the source and resource for the blessing goodbye Felicia I am the one that will carry the Abraham covenant forward goodbye Felicia I am the instrument for transfer goodbye Felicia I am the past present and the future goodbye Felicia I'm all of that in a bag of chips goodbye Felicia and can I take it to another perspective all of us who are twice born and blood washed have the ministry of goodbye mm. you have authority to walk the earth with God and you and God is a majority so I'm here to tell you to stop holding on the people who don't want to be with you. Stop crying and boo-hooing over somebody who don't want the privilege of loving you and walking with you. They don't want to walk with you, let them leave. If they can't walk away, if they want to walk away, let them leave. I, I want you to stop talking to people, trying to convince them uh, to stay with you. Let them go. Stop putting all that energy trying to tell people to love you and be with you. Uh-uh, no, no, no. You are saved and sanctified and Holy Ghost filled. If they can't see the blessing you are, shame on them. I want you to stop telling them. Don't, don't manipulate. Don't have emotional outbursts. Don't throw a temper tantrum. Don't manipulate. Don't try to trap him or her. Don't lose your religion. Don't lose your mind. Don't try to control uh, the outcome. They say they want to leave. Go in the dresser drawer. Snatch out their drawers and all their pants. Go in the closet. Get some hangers. Put their stuff on the hangers. Grab you a couple of suitcases. Put all their stuff in there and say goodbye to Alicia. Stop worrying about all of that. Stop going crazy about all that. God is trying to tell you, I want you to exercise a new spiritual gift. It's called the ministry of goodbye. I'm trying to help you with a new anointing. I'm trying to help you. Don't talk to another person. Uh, uh, don't talk another person into not leaving you. Don't talk uh, another person into staying with you. Don't try to convince another person to love you. Please call me. Please treat me right. Please care for me. Come see about me. You don't really care? No! That Negro or girl don't care about you, brother. Let her go. When people want to walk out of your life, let them walk. When they don't want to be connected to you, disconnect them. Change your number, change your password, change your email, change your address, change your launch page, change your website, change your social media, disconnect. Let them go. Loose them and let them go. Stop. Stop, stop wetting your pillow at night. Stop complaining about it because listen, the season for them to be in your life is over. The season is over. I know you don't want, yes, okay, yes, they rock your world. Yes, I don't care how cute he is or she is. I don't care how addicted you are to them. I don't care how long you be with them. I don't care you got pictures all over the wall about all the places you went. Stop living under the threat of departure and let them go. Y'all still ain't with me. Y'all sitting there looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm trying to tell you who you are in God. Keep on preaching. Yes, Holy Ghost, I will. Uh, I, uh, a lot of us are... Uh, 
believers who have authority that we are under the threat of departure. Yeah. Have you been under the threat of departure? What are you talking about, Pastor? I'm not happy. I ain't feeling you no more. I don't really want this. Every week, every other day, I'm out of here. Stop packing a little bag. Take a little bag. Don't take the bags. Take a little bag and go. Threats, threats. I'm not happy. Stop, stop worrying about it. And you are tripping because this person is making you feel rejected as they totally eat at your self-esteem and being. And they always talking about how I'm not happy they are. If you're not happy, go! My job is not to make you happy as a spouse. My job is to make you like Jesus. Happiness is your responsibility. It ain't mine. Tell somebody it ain't mine. Did you notice? Did you notice? That rejection has the word ejection in it? You ain't happy? Press eject. I'm always in your way? Press eject. You don't think I'm good looking? Press eject. You gonna sleep in the other room forever? Press eject. You don't see how good I've been to you? Press eject. You ain't gonna eat my food no more? Press eject. Rejection has ejection. And they don't want to eject them out of your life and start over. Uh, sometimes it's the will of God that you move on. Stop complaining. Stop ejecting them out of your life. Don't take on the spirit of rejection. Eject that fool out of your life. Your value. Your value and your destiny is not tied to who left you. Your value is tied to the person who said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Your value is not tied to those who want to leave your house. Uh, it's the one who said, I, I'll be with you even to the end of the time. Your value is not the one that you got to be perfect. Your value is tied to the one who says, I'm married to the backslider. To the one who has been with me in the dark seasons. To the one that's been with me in the light seasons. The one who never left me uh, when I had ups and downs and all arounds. Uh, you want to leave? Bye bye Felicia. Uh, help that person pack their bags and show them the door. People leave because they're not joined to you. I don't care if you wrap them in a cord and tie them to the radiator. If they're not joined to you, they already left in their mind. I don't care if you get super glue and you glue your lips together. If they're not joining you, he ain't gonna feel nothing. I don't care if you get handcuffed and try to handcuff him in the bed and tease him. He still ain't gonna be there or she ain't gonna be there. If they left you, they're gone. Stop trying to... Stop trying to make a mirage out of something ain't really there. Stop trying to make a miracle out of mess. God said that the time is over. The place is here. The time is now. It's time to get your bags and leave. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, 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 bye Felicia. Dry your eyes. Put your mascara on. Put your big drawers on, brother. Uh, put it on there and walk and go and slay them. Slip. Slay them. Brother, you, you, you look like Obama and walk up into that place and let that woman see that king in you? Yeah, that's right. I'm here. I'm here. You got the wrong. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Walk like a nigga. Walk like you know who you are. Stroll like you know who you are. Don't, don't be looking down, worrying and depressed, head down, scared to be who you are in God. You now have authority to stroll and slay and be who God made you to be. Stop complaining. Dry your ears. Throw some water on your face. Put some oil on your skin. Put a new suit on and go stepping and go slaying. If you're not called by God to be in your life nothing will hold them there it's over somebody say it's over a period is in our time together the book says the end I'm not spending no more energy trying to raise the dead you're frustrated because there's no fruit the vine is dead the relationship is dead 
the fig tree is cursed. It will not produce another fruit. It's because it's out of season. Whether you like it or not, some people are out of your season. Be done with it. Bye-bye, Felicia. Bye. Finally, remember you're more than enough. Remember, can I have two more minutes? You have the ministry of goodbye. And remember, you have a blessing hidden in the rejection. You see, Leah is the unloved wife. Leah is not the choice one of Jacob. Leah is normal, and Rachel appears to be perfect. Leah is hated by her sister, but Leah is God's choice. Leah is the first and the primary. Verse 31, when the Lord saw Leah was unloved, he opened her womb. She bore Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. And you see, she prayed for each one of those, and she gave a name that reflected the condition she was in. Reuben was affliction. Simeon was, he heard my cry. Levi is, I want to be attached to my husband. And then Judah came. I'm going to praise him no matter what. All four names was part of her process that she moved through. The names were a reflection of the process God was taking her through. Suffering and affliction, tears and crying, then trying to reattach. But then it was... Not only will he give you uh, the blessing in the rejection, he will give you the birth of rejection, the birth out of rejection of greatness. But you will be chosen for greatness in him. Now, to really understand the story, to close the sermon, you've got to go at Matthews 1 and 2 and 19. It's because Abraham begot Isaac, it says, Isaac begot Jacob, Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. The Matthew text doesn't list nobody else. All those other brothers' name is not in the genealogy there. It's Judah. Mm -hmm. His brothers are not there. And Jacob begot Joseph later in verse 19. This is a different Jacob. Uh, and the husband of Mary whom Jesus Christ uh, is called. Jesus is called the Christ. Listen now. Jesus came from the line of Judah. The child of Leah. Don't you miss this now. The savior of the world was born out of rejection because he too would be rejected and despised. He understands your rejection and your abandonment and your invisibility because he was rejected and despised. He know what it feel like for people to talk about him, stone him, whisper about him, put him down, abandon him. He went through all of that so he identifies with all of our rejection and so the rejected one who was unloved by Jacob produced the rejected one who would save the entire world. And so if you're feeling rejected today, feeling like a failure today, Feeling invisible, feeling left behind and left out to bring forth something. You feel rejected, but I want you to know the rejected ones will bring forth fruit, something new and something great. God can take your rejected situation and turn it around. God has a plan for your rejection. He can pull a blessing out of it. Out of rejection comes redemption. Out of frustration comes a new future. Out of lovelessness becomes perfect love. Out of defects comes deliverance. Out of flaws comes favor. Out of hurt shouts of hallelujah. Out of abandonments comes the anointing. Out of the despise comes your destiny. Out of the margins comes your miracles. Out of being ostracized comes your opportunity. Out of your burdens comes your blessings. Out of your crisis comes great character. Out of your pain comes great purpose. Out of your problems comes great praise. Is there anybody in here that got some praise in their mouth for what God has done for them today? I'm going to praise him anyhow. 
He came down 30 in two generations. And I'm going to praise God. Praise God from whom my blessings flow. He had me when I was down. And he showed up, picked me up, and turned me around. I will never stop praising God. Praise him for setting me free. Praise him for giving me a new opportunity. Praise him for a new season. Praise him for new power. Praise him for all the blessings that are coming your way. Thank you, Jesus. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises will be continually be in my mouth. Is there anybody in the tribe of Judah that knows the lion of Judah? Is there anybody who got a made up mind and said, I'm not going to allow rejection to define my life. I'm going to go take over the world with Jesus. Yes. Father, thank you for making it clear and plain that there's a Judah in me. Yes. Oh God, if I really know how much you love me, I won't allow nobody to put me in their mental and physical boxes. I'm anointed by you to move out of anybody's box. Thank you, Father, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Father, come on, open your mouth. We declare our freedom today. We declare our freedom today. I'm free in Christ, free of worry, free of depression, free of melancholy. I'm free because the Son set me free. God, thank you for redeeming me and claiming me. Thank you for another chance. I will remember for the rest of my life I'm more than enough. You and me, God, is a majority. I will remember, God, how much you love me. And I will not let nobody speak death on my life. Thank you for a new start. I'm going to leave out here and run down the street. I'm going to shout it from the rooftops. I've got my mind made up. My heart is fixed. My mind is made up. I'm on a mission now. God, take me to the next level. I'm ready to tear up the place. I got to cut some pictures up. I got to delete some names. I got to clean out my book. I got to do something new. I'm about to go slay some stuff. God, I'm ready. Ready or not, devil, here I come. I'm going to change the world. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for another chance to live and listen, to discover what real love is really about. I've settled too long. I want the real thing. This is our prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, everybody put your hands together and bless them. Yeah.